Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Nonstop Talking with your girl here, Vivian Liu. I got this hat from my friend Sadith and I haven't worn it out yet, um, but I thought, okay, let's wear it for this video then. Uh, so it's kind of shadowing half my face. I don't really know how that will look, uh, but let's roll with it. Today I will be discussing my most disappointing books of 2022. I want to make clear that I don't dislike any of these books. Um, mainly they're like three out of five like middle of the road reads. It was just that they were lacking in some small way um, that left me not fully satisfied. I have 10 titles on the list and I will be going down the list alphabetically. First on the disappointing list is A Court of Silver Flames which is the fourth book in the Akatar series by Sarah J Maas. I was super excited about this book originally. There was like a teaser in the third book that got me so hyped. Uh, Cassian and Nesta, like I was so ready for them. I was already in love with them. However, when my pre-order of A Court of Silver Flames arrived, I was like really intimidated by the size. It's huge. It's bigger than a brick. Like I was just like, and um also i was one of those people who detested the cover change absolutely detested it i was like what is this ugly thing that they switched it to um so i was unhappy with the cover i was um afraid of the size so i did not pick it up when it came out in 2021 in 2022 i decided to put my big girl pants on and was like you know what let's listen to the audiobook um and i found it so long like it was just so brutally long like why was it that long and um i just didn't really like the way cassian and nesta started that i was just like man i'm disappointed now regardless i still consider myself sarah j mass trash um and i will continue um to read her books when i get to them second on the list is asking for it by louise o'neill i know i am in the minority about this book like i just feel like it didn't live up to all the hype like everyone kept talking about it and like loving it and I was just like why don't I love it and I was waiting for that moment where like the plot would just really grip me and would just have me in a chokehold emotionally and that never happened for me it never came and I was like disappointed over that plus I don't think I was fond of the writing style and that's why like I couldn't really get as emotionally invested as I really wanted to be Third, we have Beyond the Wand, The Magic and Mayhem of Growing Up a Wizard by Tom Felton. Harry Potter will always have a special place in my heart. I grew up with it. With that being said, back in the day, I was a Dramini shrip shripper. Shipper. <laughs> Regardless, if you like Tom Felton and you particularly liked his years as playing Draco Malfoy, then this is for you. Um, this was made for you. Um, I feel like this book will reach and hit its target audience and that's it. Like it doesn't add anything else. Fourth on the list is Clara Lee and the Apple Pie Dream by Jenny Han. I feel like at this point we're all kind of waiting and hoping that Jenny Han will write something new um not that we're not enjoying the shows we all are very much enjoying the shows i'm looking forward to the second season of the summer i turned pretty and i'm very much looking forward to um kitty's spinoff but yeah like while i'm waiting for the shows and while i'm waiting for jenny han to one day write something new um or publish something new i was like you know what let's go over her backlist which is like mainly her middle grade stuff and this didn't suck it was like decent but i think i wanted like more than decent like in short it's about um a korean american girl who enters her school's um like i guess beauty pageant fifth on the list is family of liars which is the prequel to we were liars by e lockhart i previously uh read we were liars and i really enjoyed it 
I think it was probably on my most surprising list the year of the year that I read it, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Um, so I was kind of iffy about this prequel. Um, and honestly, I was rightly so, like feeling a little like sus about starting this. Um, I think like her writing is still there. Um, however, it so it follows the parents of like the characters of We Were Liars when they were young um, and something happens and I just feel like it didn't have that shocking twist that I craved and learned to crave from We Were Liars. Number six is a long title so let me read it. It's Finding Freedom, A Cook Story, Remaking a Life from Scratch by Erin French. In 2022, Instagram introduced me to the reality cooking show um, Lost Kitchen and I loved it. The small time vibes are immaculate. The cooking is amazing. The story of like starting again, starting anew and like surviving and thriving. Like it's great. Um, it's like a homely show to just like ch watch and chill. And um, if you have HBO Max, like me, then give it a try. Um, so yeah, once I learned about this chef, I was like, I really like her. Let me go pick up her book. So like while waiting for the third season of the show to come out, um, I picked up the audiobook and um, I feel like the or like Aaron French has an amazing story about like perseverance, family, love and it's gonna be very like touching and motivational um, to some. Uh, however, I felt like the book really needed to be edited and cut down a bit. But at the same time, I felt like key details were missing from like the storytelling. Um, so while I don't recommend um, the book, but feel free to give it a try if it's your thing. Um, I do want to say that if you like small town, homely vibes and you love cooking shows, feel free to give The Lost Kitchen on HBO Max a try. Number seven I think is going to shock a few people but it's Finlay Donovan is killing it. This is the first book in maybe a trilogy? Probably. Um, I guess a series um, and the author is El Cosimano. Am I saying that correctly? Uh, but yes, so Finlay Donovan is like a super duper hyped book. I feel like a lot of people are talking about it and that's how I heard about it from multiple people talking about it on like booktube and um, it was just too campy for me. Just way too campy for me. However, like the way that it ends I am so intrigued like I want to know what happens so there's like a part of me that's like I need to be updated I need to know what happens to Finlay Donovan but at the same time like but you didn't like the writing style you're gonna go through the same thing if you pick up the second book um so I'm like at a rock and a hard place right now because I want to know but do I want to read um in the, like the sense of like do i want to continue so i probably will uh but yeah like the first book it just it didn't vibe with me but at the same time like props it for getting me invested number eight is the night tiger by yang si cho uh this wasn't a bad book per se um it's probably just an issue with me i think that the writing was good. It was a somewhat well plotted out mystery with like a long game to it, um, if you catch my vibe. Uh, but I just, I was bored. Like mainly I was just bored like and it lost my attention pretty early on and I was really shocked about that. Looking back, I feel like there wasn't much that was memorable about the book either. Number nine is The Princess Diaries by Carrie Fisher. Uh, why am I such a bully? This is another memoir. I need to like not be so judgmental about autobiographies. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I think my main thing was um, I would rather much enjoy 
like the movies without knowing some of the behind the scenes like drama and scandal and i'll leave it at that this is number 10 the last book on disappointing reads list of 2022 my disappointing reads list of 2022 and it's the project by courtney summers so i read sadie um in audio format highly recommended in audio format and i loved it and then i picked up cracked up to be and Cracked Up to Be was also solid. So I was excited for another Courtney Summers book to just come and like blow my, blow me away. I don't know, blow my what? Uh, <laughs> uh, but the project just didn't work. It's a cult book um, and I just felt like there was some parts to it that felt too easy and I just, I just wasn't having like fun with it. I was waiting for more, I was searching for more, I needed more, and I just didn't get that more from it. That's it for my most disappointing reads of 2022. I was going to make a separate video for like books I DNF in 2022, but I just looked at the list and it's only three titles. So um, I'm just going to read out those titles here. So we have The Good Girl Complex by L. Kennedy, uh, The Nerd Jaw Conundrum by Hayden Hall, and One Small Thing by Aaron Watt. Um, and that's it. Alrighty, uh, that ends this video of my most disappointing reads plus DNF books of 2022. Who will I do other year and themed videos if I have the motivation maybe but I highly doubt it so I think this will probably end the 2022 year end series for me and I'm okay with that outro time like comment subscribe see you in my next video whenever that is bye